All right, so this video is going to be a little bit about black spot septoria, which is a blight. It's a form of blight, but it's just a different type of blight. Some people refer to it as black spot. Some people refer to it as black speck. Uh, that's actually a different disease, but there's a number of uh, black spot septoria type of fungal diseases out there, and one of them is this type. All right. So to you, you might look at that and say, oh, that's just blight. That looks like blight to me. Well, there could actually be a combination of things on this particular tomato that could be causing some of the effects to look like blight. But generally, black spots septoria, and I'm going to pick a leaf here. Generally, black spot septoria looks like that. If I can focus you in. This is a, a real good example of it. All right, it looks like this, or it looks like this. It's, it, it makes these spots in clusters, and then them clusters slowly begin to uh, spread themselves around your plant. Now this particular plant is really trying to fight it off. It doesn't look like it's having much, much success. In fact, if I look at this plant here, I'm starting to see a whiteness down by the stems where the stem meets the plant so that's telling me that this particular plant here you can see it's starting to turn golden here this particular plant may be too infected and I think that it's already gone lymphatically so it break that off it could even be a root disease but if you look on the inside of that stem you can see I'm trying to get you clear on that you can see this those brown streaks in there that's bad. Whatever it is, whether it's black spot or root disease, whatever it is, is causing, uh, it's already internal. It's already inside the plant, and that's a bad sign. Now, it's only doing it to this one plant. So, I might be able, like this stem is still green, so I might be able to clip off this plant here and maybe save the rest of the plant. I, it's hard to say that part of the plant looks like it's totally infected how it got infected did it get infected through the root system I don't know did it get infected because it got into the leaf then into the stem and traveled back to the to the plant which is what I'm inclined to believe right now it's very possible that's one of the ways that late blight becomes very devastating is because that's how it spreads itself around by getting into the plant that way now there's there was another plant here and I think I removed it and it was diseased as well but this is generally what black spot septoria looks like it's a cluster of spots that form like that and then those spots will spread now that it's been raining it really started to spread out it's popping up all around the bottom of the plant now I just treated these plants too with copper and it's just raining non-stop so there's no point in treating the plant with copper if it's just going to keep raining constantly because that'll wash off and go into your soil and you really don't want those fungicides in your soil they're not exactly good for your soil I don't know what that is is that a tick I don't know but he's off my plant now I could be the vector right there but a lot of these leaves are already showing disease and they're starting to get over to the healthy plant so this plant should be removed from here now some of the suckers I could probably remove and repropagate this plant this is the glacier tomato so it's already been stressed out by the intense heat and sun so it's not really helping that we got black spot septoria on it so let me show you what the difference is between black spot septoria and early blight now late blight is very distinctive Late blight looks kind of like that. That's, I'll show you a classic sign of late blight. Not that this video is about late blight. Let me show you. I've seen a leaf on here that exhibited late blight. Okay, this is, this is most likely started from late blight. That's classically what it will look like. Or you'll see leaves rot off. One, pet, one of the petals on the tomato plant, the leaf will rot completely off. That's most likely caused by late blight. Because late blight... It, it strikes and kills it right away it kills you and then that piece of dead material that's hanging from the leaf once it gets hit by the late blight 
like there, it hangs from the leaf. That piece of material that's hanging there eventually gets into the stem of the plant, and that's how it gets into you and destroys your tomato plant. So if you see late blight, you have to physically remove it right away. Whereas with early blight or black spot, you can generally treat it and not worry about it becoming internal inside the plant. I like to call call it lymphatic I don't, because that's kind of what it's like. It's getting to the inside health of the plant. And the way you control that is to remove these leaves. Now this plant looks like it may already be too far gone because the stems are starting to, right here, they're starting to yellow off. It's really showing heavy signs of dying. So it's probably internal. If I cut that plant right here, you'll probably see that it's all brown on the inside. So but that's late blight. Late blight can be very de devastating. It starts off at the tips of the leaves usually, and it has that arrow effect, that arrow shape to it. And then it just gets inside the stem of the plant, and it travels right to the main stem. And when it does that, that's the end of your plant. That's why a lot of times you'll see something like this turns, starting to turn yellow and die. This could have been infected with late blight, and I missed it. And now it's on the inside of the plant. And you can kind of see... You could kind of see, like right there, some of the the rotting on on the stem part and all that. That's a sign of late blight. And there's a good chance that this plant needs to be removed right away, or cut back before it gets down to the main stem. If I cut it back to here, it might recover. But you got to get rid of that upper portion of the plant when you see late blight. Here's some late blight. I don't even want to handle this, but this is what late blight will start to appear as: brown rotting sections of the leaf you see right there that's late blight that's what that looks like and late blight is the one you really got to worry about because when late blight takes hold that one's really bad that'll wipe a tomato plant out and within a week or weeks time it's not too much early blight the early blight is really being fought off here's some early blight now you can see early blight just kind of shows up as random spots around here and there on the leaf you'll see just random spots that's early blight. This is septoria right here, more than likely. You can see that pattern. See that pattern, those clusters? That's septoria. If I, and septoria is worse than in early blight. Early blight's not as bad. The early blight's like the less, least, least of the evils to worry about. Septoria and late blight are the, like the worst of those type of leaf diseases. You really don't see much early blight in here. It's just not thriving anymore now that it rained and it cooled down. Now what's kicking in is the late blight and the other diseases. And you can see I got a lot of flower drops coming in. This is all due to the intense amount of rain we've been getting. So I'm getting a lot of flower drops. Um, because of that rain, I may have to wipe half this crop, cut it halfway down. Just destroy my whole tomatoes and everything that's growing because of the, of the intense amount of rain. It's just gonna rot the plants. But I really don't see too much early blight. Uh, that's anthracnose. Could be black spot, but that looks more or less like anthracnose or an anthraxnose. I think that's how you say it. Don't really see much early blight. It mostly kind of disappeared. Here's another plant that got some more anthracnose on it. It's a very bad disease if you get that one. Believe me when I tell you. That's like one of the ones you don't want um yeah i really don't have much early blight on here at all don't really have any i notice over here i've seen it is it just it's withering away it doesn't want to the, the early blight don't want to survive because the conditions changed rapidly and the leaves that did have it on there they kind of fell off already Here's more anthracnose. Look at this. I should do a video just on anthracnose. It's really starting to develop. This is like early blight right here. These little spots, random single spots you see. Now that could be the beginning of septoria too. So you don't really know until it begins to show itself in its full form. Then you'll be able to properly diagnose it because it could start off with one or two spots like that and then boom, within a couple of days it spreads out to this whole river of little dots connected to each other that is black spot septoria yeah this is this is anthracnose right there that's bad when you get that that's a real bad one saying about anthracnose so this is about black spot 
and early blight. I mean, the only signs I see of early blight left on here is really what you see left on here. Now that, no, that's actually septoria. We looked at that. Really no early blight. There might be a couple spots here and there. Yeah, back by the greenhouse, there's plenty of early blight going on down there, so. But anyway, I just wanted to show you generally what what black spot septoria looks like. Some people refer to it or as black speck. They're actually two different diseases, but they are very similar. They're basically like late blight and early blight are very similar. They're from the same uh, pathogen. It's just they have a different form and they, they infect the plants differently. But like I say, that is black spot, okay? And you can see the pattern on it. Now, really, if you pick all these leaves off of this plant to try to stop it, it spreads it even more. The, really, the best thing you can do at this point, unless you see the stem turning yellow and going back to the main stem, then you want to remove it because you don't want it to get inside the main stem of the plant here. All right, so if it looks like it's traveling back, then get rid of it. Like here, for example, you see how this stem here, you see how that's got like uh, brown on it? It's already in here. That needs to get off of there before it gets into the inside of the plant. But I think this, this particular plant I might have to remove completely. Because it's already turning yellow and I don't think it's going to live much longer. You know, once this stuff kicks in, that's really the end of it. But, alright, I guess that's it. You know, just a quick look at what Black Spot Septoria looks like and you know how it spreads and kind of how to tell the difference between that and an early or an early blight and like i say if you got early blight that's bad but that's nowhere near as bad as black spot black spot early blight really has to really develop heavily in order for it to get to the stem whereas black spot travels directly back to it crawls along the surface of the stem gets right to the main plant and it gets in there and it just it'll kill a plant off relatively pretty quick it's almost as bad as late blight those are the two worst things you want to deal with early blight is bad but it's manageable if you strip all the leaves off and you clean it and you spray it generally you could get it under control but the late blight and the black spot those are the those are real bad all right so like share and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one